Okay, so today what I'm going to try to do is show you how to hook up one of these um, Ethernet controllers to a Teensy. And the one I'm going to be using is a Ethernet controller that's based upon the ENC28J60 chip. Um, these are not really well doc documented, which was a little bit frustrating. So let me, uh, well, let me show you what we're going to try to do first, the goal. Uh, here's a little web page that I've created. Uh, it's actually being served by this Teensy through the Ethernet controller. And you can see I've got analog data. It's You see it flashing from time to time, perhaps on the recording. It's getting uh, real-time updates. I have a couple of uh, photo resistors here that it's collecting data from. So if I cover them up, the value goes up. There we go, 364. And I have created a couple of switches here which I can turn on, for example, the red light, turn on the green light, turn off the red light, turn on the blue. Okay, I can turn anything on and off, <clears throat> and it refreshes the screen. Okay, All this stuff, including the coffee beans, are being served by the Teensy via this Ethernet controller. So what I want to do now is talk about hookup and how to make this thing fit onto it. Uh, and let me go ahead and pull one of these up. And I'll zoom in a little bit so we can actually see it. And move that over. Okay. I'll go a little bit further. All right. And then the other thing I'm going to do is pull up this data set. So, what we really need to do, let me a teeny bit of focus. I'm going to pause it for just a moment. Okay, what we need to do is match up the pins. On the Teensy, we're going to be using the SPI port to communicate with this, which means we're going to be using the CS pin, the D out pin, the DN pin, and the SCK. Okay, we need these four, plus we need two more for power to hook this up. Uh, some of these are real straightforward, some of them are not so much. Okay. The other thing to point out is, on this particular case, I'm using uh, the Patent Robotics motherboard. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to be using it at a 3.3 volts. Okay, so that means when you look at this, all right, and this does not make any sense at all. I don't know why they labeled it this way. These two pins down here, closest to this side, are labeled Q3 and ground. Q3 actually is the 3.3 volt pin, this one right here. This is going to be ground. If I was running it at 5 volts, I would use the ones that are actually labeled such, 5 volts and ground. So this one here would be my 5 volt, and this one here would be my ground. Okay. The other pins of interest, we have the CS pin, which is this one here, the second one, as labeled from here. The CS pin is going to hook up to the CS pin of the Teensy. All right, that one's easy enough. The next one up, third from the bottom, is labeled ST. Now, I'm convinced that this was probably just a error. It's probably supposed to have been an S capital I uh, for an input, and it was typed T, and they made a gazillion of them, and so it sticks. So. At least on my board here, if it says ST, it actually, I think, should be SI, and it's the input. And we want to take the input pin, okay, and it's going to go to the out of this. Now, let's take a look. I think we're done on this side of the board completely, because we only need a total of six. Four for control and two for power and ground. On this side, we go to, here's again the 3.3N. This is a reset. The next one up is SCK, okay, which is going to hook up to the SCK. And then the one above the SCK, the third one down on this side, is labeled SO, which is going to be, oops, it's hard to do with the camera, this one right here. And that one is going to go to this, okay, to the DN. I also have all these things on the code examples 
Uh, both cold examples, which I'll show you in a second, they're labeled here. So P pin 10 goes to CS, pin 11 goes to the ST, pin 12 goes to SO, pin 13 to SCK. So you should be able to put it up that way. And again, depending if you're using 5 volts or 3.3, you're going to choose one of these two sets to, to wire in the power. All right. I suppose the next thing to do is to uh, jump ahead now to some code. Um, I've created, I should go to the home. I've put the two code examples and I'll have them linked on the website. Um, if you go to code examples under my page, and then you go to this bottom link down here, the current bottom link, TNCIO and control examples, and those two right here are going to be the ones that we're going to be interested in today. All right. The first one we need is we need to look at, and this is going to be a little bit tough, we need to look at um, finding out the actual address of this chip. Okay, so let me zoom back out. To make this all work, we need to get the unique address of this chip. Okay, now fortunately, um, ETH, the Arduino already comes already preloaded with some pretty awesome software that only needs to be minorly modified. If you go to uh, examples and go to um, Ethernet and we go down here to this uh, address printer, okay, we open up a hunk of code like this. This code doesn't work, or I couldn't get it to work with this particular chipset. All right, the first thing we had to do, or I had to do, was to get a new library that would work with this chipset. So again, what I've done here is on this particular piece of code, okay, I've actually added in the link to that, and you can get to it right here. So if we copy and paste this into a new page, oh, come on, go. There we go. Let me make this bigger. Okay. You're going to want to download this particular library as a zip file. Once you've done that, you're going to come over here. You're going to go to include library and you're going to add a zip library and then you're going to choose the location that that zip library has been installed and say OK or open. And then that will then put the library into the Arduino uh, software. OK. Now, I'm going to take, and we need to get that address. So I'm going to copy this piece of code. And I'll just go File New. We'll make a new one. All right. And let me just close this out right now. Let me run it. And I'm going to, oh, I have to save it. I'm going to delete it eventually, so I'm going to make it, there we go, we're going to call it delete me now, and save, and I'm going to pause this while it goes ahead and does its thing. Okay, it's done, <clears throat> and it printed out the IP address of this particular device. This is probably going to be different for you. I'm on Comcast uh, in my area. My local router has an address which starts off with a 10 point and my device is on my local network and it's been assigned the 16.16 position within my network okay so this is going to be unique probably to you don't expect to see this number but it is very important that we have it all right so now let's go back to our goal of creating whoops uh, that's not what i want to do Let's go back to our goal of creating the actual web server. So I'm going to take and close this up. Actually, let's be, before we do that, let me just minimize this. And let me show you, now that you have the library, okay, this UIP library, there's nothing stopping you from using any one of the resources that are already in uh, Arduino. So if I go, for example, to examples, and I go down to Ethernet. And let's open up something like uh, this web server. All right. 
Now, <clears throat> this web server will, right now won't work, okay, for two reasons. One, we have to then put the right library for this particular chipset. So we're going to use the UIP Ethernet library. And secondly, the examples that are already here written by uh, Tom, they uh, have whatever IP address he was using. Now we have a unique one here. So I'm going to change this to 10. And I need to make this 0, 0, <clears throat> 1, 6. Oops, 1, 6. And this particular piece of code, what it's going to do is once it hooks up, it is um, going to send to my web browser or to, to the internet. It's going to send a string, set of strings that are going to create an HTML document in the page. And we're going to see it do an analog read. It's going to do six analog reads on six different channels, and it's going to display them. So hopefully, if all goes well, it works fine. So I'll upload this. I'm going to pause it. OK, and it's done. <clears throat> and now what I want to do is I want to see it. So do I go to my web browser. And then <clears throat> we'll make a new window. And then right in here, we type in that address, 10.0.0.16. And lo and behold, I have a uh, web page which is being uh, served by the Teensy going up the Ethernet controller. And you can see that it's getting well, these four data points here are all just uh, floating points. <coughs> I do have two photoresistors hooked to these, but I didn't call pull up, so I don't expect to see much going on. But you see it's working, OK? So let's take that and get rid of it. And now let's go ahead and we want to go back to trying to create that web page that I started you off with. Uh, so let's go to the Ethernet on a Teensy. And I'm going to copy all of this. Control C. And I'm going to go to my website here that was delete. OK. I'm going to run it. And I'll pause it. Oops, I should run it. And pause. OK, it's done. So now we can go to the web, and we can go to, well, actually, that's already changed because it's refreshed. And there we have it. We have the website. It's all set up. Let me make this a little smaller. And we'll go to the image. Pull that back again. And it works perfectly. OK, I'm actually going to stop right now, and then I'll shoot another quick little video that explains how I actually created this and the method that I chose to, to design this page and why it works. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes.